Let's say you have a bunch of data inside of a Google Sheet, and you have a lot of people collaborating on that inside of their project. They're super happy to work inside of Google Sheets, but you need this data inside of your Java application. In this video, we'll show you how you can use it. I'll start by creating a Gradle-capable Java application. I'm going to use IntelliJ to create this, but you can use whatever IDE or text editor works for you. I'm going to name the project Sheets and Java. I hit next, and then I'm going to use auto import for the Gradle build, and then hit next, and then finish to create the project. Inside of my build.gradle file, I'm going to add the three dependencies we need to use the Google Sheets SDK. That's the API client, the OAuth, and the Sheets specific SDK. Next, inside of the Java quick start, I'm going to hit the enable Google Sheets API and then download the client configuration. I'm going to drag that over to the project and drop it on our resources folder and hit OK to store it for later. There's a link down in the description if you need to get over to that quick start. Next, I'm going to create a Java class called Sheets and Java and hit OK. Then up here at the top, we're going to have some import statements. We need all of these standard things from Java itself. Then we need a bunch of things to handle getting OAuth working with the Google Sheets API. And then we need a few more dependencies to cover working with the Sheets API, such as Sheets scopes and value range, as well as the Sheets service itself. The first thing our class needs is some variables that we'll be working with throughout the entire project. The first of those is a Sheets service. That's going to be how we access the Google Sheets SDK. Next, we need an application name. It doesn't matter what you call this. I'm going to call mine Google Sheets example. The next one that we need here, though, is the spreadsheet ID that corresponds to the spreadsheet we'll be working with. The spreadsheet we're going to work with is this gigantic Congress data spreadsheet from Adam Isaacson. Click the Google Sheets link, and then you're going to want to make a copy of this to your own Google Drive. So hit File, make a copy, and then name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it Congress Data, and then hit OK to copy this over to my drive. Then you're going to want to grab the sheet ID. It's in the URL up here right after the slash D. So copy the ID out of there and head back over and paste it into your code. Next, you're going to want to share the spreadsheet so that the application can have access to it. So change it to anyone with a link can edit and hit done. And we're good to go. Okay, with that in place, let's write some methods that are going to help us get access here. First, we need to create an authorize method. The idea here is that we need to create an OAuth exchange to grant our application access to Google Sheets. The first thing we'll need here is an input stream to grab the credentials.json file out of resources. Next, we'll create a Google Client Secrets object that we'll call Client Secrets and use Google Client Secrets.load. This takes a JSON factory and a reader. We're going to use Google's Jackson factory and grab the default instance. And then we'll also pass in the input stream that we just specified above by creating a new input stream reader, passing in the input stream. Next, we need to create a list of scopes that we want this to have access to. In our case, we're granting the application access to spreadsheets. Next, we're going to create a Google authorization code flow by creating a new Google authorization code flow builder that takes an HTTP transport, a Jackson factory, client secrets, and the scopes that we created above. Then we'll set the data store factory to be a new file store. This is going to store our authorization token inside of a file called tokens. Then we'll set the access type to offline so that we can access this from offline. And then we'll build the authorization code flow. Next, we'll use the flow that we just created to get the actual credential object that we need for access. And that's going to use an authorization code installed app, passing in the flow, a local server receiver, and then we'll call authorize for a username called user. Then we'll return the credential out of here. This will trigger an OAuth flow that we'll see when we run our first sample. Next, we need to create the actual Sheets service that we'll be using for the rest of the application. So inside of our Git Sheets service, we'll first grab the credential by calling authorize. Next, we'll use the Sheets Builder, Sheets.Builder, to create a Google Sheets object. This takes a Google Net HTTP transport, it takes the JSON factory, and it takes the credential that we just got from our authorize function. Then it takes the application name that we created earlier, and then we can build it. Now we'll create our main function where we'll write our examples. 
First thing we'll do here is we'll get our sheets service by calling get sheets service. Then we'll create a range to fetch some values. The first thing we're going to do is read some data from the spreadsheet. What we're going to do is we're going to read from A2 down to F10. So it'll be this entire block right here. So the range we want to specify is A2 to F10 for the Congress sheet. So the range that we want to specify first specifies the sheet name, which is Congress, then exclamation point, and then A2 colon F10. That specifies the range that we want to grab. Then we'll use that range representation to create a value range object as our response from calling spreadsheets.values.get. Inside of the get, we're going to pass the spreadsheet ID that we want to access and the range. Then we'll execute that, and that'll give us back a list of values. The value will be a list of lists. Each one of the inner lists will be a row. First, we'll check to make sure that there are values in the get request response. And if there's not, we'll just log out that we couldn't find any data. If we do have values, then we're going to loop over each row in values. And for each row, we're just simply going to output some string representations of the data. And what we're going to log out is first name, space, last name, from the state that they're representative from. So that's the format that we'll use here. And those columns correspond to 6, 5, and 2. So we'll call row.get on 5, 4, and 1. If we run our code, the first time we access this, we're going to need to head to this URL to do an OAuth dance. So if I take that URL over to the browser and paste it in, it's going to ask me for permission. So I'll pick the account that I want to use. It's this first one. And then it's going to ask me if I want to grant it permission. I'll click allow and then allow one more time and we'll be ready to go. And if we head back over to the code running, we'll see that it went through and we get the first name, last name from state output that we expected. Okay, we've covered how to read data. Let's talk about how to create data. We're gonna create a row. So we're gonna create a value range, and this time we're going to set the values for that value range ourselves. And as you remember, the results from reading was a list of lists, and each list on the inside was a row. So we're gonna create arrays as list, and then inside of that, another list. This one's gonna be a list of strings, and we're gonna put this was added from code. And each one of these strings in here will represent a column in the new row that we add to the spreadsheet. Next, we'll use the sheets service to create an append request, which will return an append result. So we'll call sheets.spreadsheets.values.append. takes a spreadsheet ID and then a range again. This time we'll give it just the sheet since we want it to add to the end. And then we'll pass in the append body we created above. We'll set the value input option to user entered. So they'll go in as we've specified them in the array. And then we'll set the insert data option to insert rows since we're going to insert an entire row here. Then we'll set the include values in response to true just in case you want to process what was added. And then we'll call execute and that's going to add it to the spreadsheet at 543. So if we run it, once it succeeds and we head over, we'll see row 543 says this was added from code. Now let's update the one that says added. Let's change that to updated so that we can see how to update data inside of the spreadsheet. We'll modify this directly. I'll change the value range to be called body, and we'll change the inner array to have just updated. We'll change the append result to be an update values response, and we'll change this to just result. Down here, we'll change it, instead of append, we'll call update, and then we'll change the range to C543, and we'll pass in the body instead of the append body. We'll get rid of the insert value options, and we'll change the value input option to raw. We don't need any included results, so we're good to go now. This should update C543 to updated when we run the code. Let's run our code and see if it works. We head over to the spreadsheet and lo and behold, it says updated. The only problem is this row doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in this, so let's delete it. And that'll cover the delete part of the CRUD operations. 
Our deletion is going to work a little bit differently than the other requests have worked. For this, we're going to create a delete dimension request, and then we're going to pass it into something called a batch update request. First thing we'll do is we'll set up this delete dimension request. We're going to set a range, and the range that it takes is a dimension range. The dimension range is going to take a sheet ID. Now, it's not the spreadsheet ID we've been working with. It's the actual sheet within the spreadsheet, and that's this value at the end of the URL. Copy that integer out of here and take it back and paste it into the code. Next, we'll specify that we want the dimension to be a row. We're going to delete a row. Next, we'll set the start index for the rows that we want to delete to be 542. Remember, it's zero indexed, so that'll delete 543. And it'll only delete 543 because there's no more rows in the spreadsheet. Now that we have that, we need to create a list of requests. Again, we're passing this into something called a batch update request. It can take a bunch of requests to run sequentially. In our case, we're only going to pass in one, but that's how these different requests work. There's a list of the requests that you can pass into a batch update found down in the description of this video. Here, we're adding a request by calling set delete dimension, passing in that delete request that we specified above. Next, we need to create the actual batch update spreadsheet request so that we can pass in the list of requests from above. So we'll create a new batch update spreadsheet request. We'll set the requests equal to the list of requests that we specified above. And then finally, we'll use the sheet service to actually call this batch update. So sheet service.spreadsheets.batch update. We'll pass in the spreadsheet ID like we've done above, and then we'll pass in the body of our batch update request and call execute. If we save this and give it a run, head over to the spreadsheet, the row will be gone. That's all there is to it for basic CRUD operations on Google Sheets using Java. That's going to do it for this video.